Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah. Let's stand up for the word. Hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Lift your hands up. Wow. Heavenly Father, I give you glory. I thank you for your anointing. I thank you that it's not by might, it's not by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. I thank you for what shall be done today. I thank you for the breakthroughs that shall occur. I thank you for the angels that shall be activated. In the mighty name of Jesus. Mighty name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. Let's start, stay standing and get the word. I want you to turn to the book of Isaiah chapter 47. Isaiah chapter 47. Whew. Isaiah chapter 47 verse 4. Isaiah chapter 47 verse 4. And I'm going to preach on a message called, Hallelujah, I will not be sunken treasure. Turn to your neighbor and say, I will not be sunken treasure. I will not be sunken oh, you're going to understand what that means. Isaiah chapter 47, reading from verse 4. Let's read together. As for our Redeemer, the Lord of hosts is his name, the Holy One of Israel. Let's read it again. As for our Redeemer, the Lord of hosts is his name, the Israel. Okay, let's now turn to, to the scripture in Timothy. Hallelujah. Okay, Timothy, the scripture in Timothy. Let's have a look at it. And the scripture is Timothy chapter 1 from verse 18. Timothy chapter 1, verse 18 to 20. Let's read this together. Hallelujah. Have we all found it? It's also on the uh, screen as well. Okay, this charge, let's go together. This charge, I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you. Read on. That by them you may wage the good warfare, having faith and a good... Some having... Have made shipwreck, of whom are... Might deliver to Satan that they may learn not to blaspheme. Hallelujah. Shivadaya. Glory be to God. Okay, let's take our seats. There is a revelation that you need to have. It's a revelation of the Lord's name. Now, when Jesus was praying in John chapter 17, he said, Heavenly Father, I have manifested unto them your names. I've revealed unto them your names. You see, his name is not God. God describes who he is. But his name is not God. Now, just as I, who is made in the image of God, there are different titles that describe different aspects of me. I am called husband. I'm called brother. I'm called father. I'm called bishop. And each title describes a particular aspect of me. So it is about God. There are different names that de describe different aspects of him. He has a name called Adonai, which means my master, my owner. The one who created me. The one who I report to. He's called El Shaddai, which means the God who is more than enough. He has more than enough. More than enough money. More than enough of joy, more than enough peace for me. He is Jehovah Rohi. He's the Lord my shepherd. He's Jehovah Shalom. He's the Lord my peace. Hallelujah. He's Jehovah Makedesh. The Lord my sanctifier. So there are different names uh, that, that, that describe God. He's also called the I Am. That is I Am that I Am. That's a miracle name. That means whatever he needs me to be, 
whatever you need me to be, whatever miracle you need, if you need the ravens to bring you bread, then the ravens will bring you bread. If you need wind to blow pigeons to land on your camp, then I am able. If you need fish to go down into the bottom of the sea and find one golden coin and bring it up for you to have, then I'm able to do that. But there is a name that you need to understand if you are going to wage a good warfare and that name is Jehovah Sabaoth. Somebody say Jehovah Sabaoth. Jehovah Sabaoth is the name Lord of hosts. It means Lord of spiritual armies. Now there are many people who do not understand how God works. They don't understand how the kingdom of God works. Well, the kingdom of Satan is patterned after the kingdom of God. Ha! Ah, how many of you know that, that, that the demon that came into your house was not Satan? How many of you know that the demon that attacked you when you were young was not, was not Satan? Satan has a throne. He has a throne and then he sends out his demons and they operate in the lives of people. Well, Satan has never built anything original. Everything he does is a copy because that's the way the kingdom of God functions. The kingdom of God is in the kingdom of God has a headquarters in heaven. At the headquarters is the throne of God, and the heavenly Father sits on the throne. He does not leave that throne. He is on his seated on the throne. Then you have Jesus who is beside him and then you have the Holy Spirit who has come to the earth and the Holy Spirit works in us the Holy Spirit works on us the Holy Spirit works through us but when God Almighty needs something to happen so when Pastor Heisen prays Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus I want you to open up an opportunity for me hallelujah at this bank or I want you to open up an opportunity for me. I want you to give me some favor I want to do some traveling hallelujah when somebody prays, when this, when our dear sister, this dear daughter of this ministry, who actually birthed the new blood company, and when she prays, Heavenly Father, give me business, the Holy Spirit is not the one that's going to work. The Holy Spirit is not the one that's doing the work. The Holy Spirit lives on the inside of her. The Holy Spirit is not going to leave her to go and bring business. Guess who does it? Angels. Guess who does it? Angels. So you need to understand that the Lord God, he's the Lord of hosts. He's the Lord of a host of angels. A host of angels. And these angels are working. But you need to learn how to activate angels. Because you need to understand that on your side is not only God the Father, God the Son, Jesus, but the holy angels of God. I said the holy angels of God. And the holy angels of God are stronger than the demons. Because you need to understand something. That Satan Lucifer is a choir boy. He was a worship leader. And he was kicked out of heaven by Michael who is what? A warrior angel. And let me tell you, Farouk having a fight with Mike Tyson. We know who's going to win. Ha. Are you with me? We know who's going to win. We know it's not even a contest. Farouk can come to sing like a nice choir boy. I tell you, we just know that we just know today he's going to die. Are you with me? Well, that is just what happened. When Michael the archangel fought with who? The choir boy called who? Lucifer. And the Bible says he was cast out of heaven. So these angels... These angels, they, they work with the saints. They work to bring things to pass. Hallelujah. I remember. Hallelujah. Now I see into the realm of angels. Not everybody sees that. But whether you see into the realm of angels or whether you don't, angels work. Whether you see demons or not, demons work. Now demons tempt people. They tempt people by giving people what? Ideas and thoughts. Well, demons are fallen angels. Angels do the same thing. Angels give people thoughts too. But they give thoughts to bless. Thoughts to advance. That is why Holy Ghost will say, get up and go to the mall today. 
<laughs> Who? Go. When you get up, go to the mall, you know that angels have been working to set up a meeting for you. Because the angels are the ones that are what? Working. So the angels work administrated by the Holy Spirit. And so the angels are at work. So these angels are fighting angels. They are messenger angels. They are, hallelujah, worship angels. They're all different types of angels. And these angels, they work with the saints. Hallelujah. When you say, Heavenly Father, I, as I go for this interview, I need favor. Do you think it is God the Father is going to leave his throne? He's sending an angel of favor. And the angel of favor is going to cause the person to look at you and an idea be put in their mind. Just how a temptation goes through. You know how a temptation hits your mind? Boom. You're like, where did I come from? And the thought hits their mind. Boom. Hire her. But she hasn't got the qualification. Hire her. And the angel, and the person has an overwhelming desire to do what? Hire you. Because it's coming from where? An angel. So angels work. Angels protect. Angels protect. Now, if it is very important for you to understand this, otherwise you will not be able to grasp what I'm about to preach to you. Oh, hallelujah. Because when you're dealing with spiritual warfare, when you're dealing with waging a good warfare, you are dealing because God Almighty, when he says the battle is the Lord's, he is talking about angels that would work for you. That's angels that would assist you. That's angels that would go before you. I remember when I was in Canada, when a part of my life fell apart, and I was praying, and an angel appeared before me and said, I am the angel in charge of your restoration and when my restoration was over he said I am the angel he says my job is finished and by the way I am the one who got you your wife <laughs> hallelujah I said thank you bless the Lord hallelujah so the angels that find spouses oh can somebody shout hallelujah Oh, so the angels that bring business. So now, if you understand this, you understand why the prophet said, they that be with us uh, is more than they that be against me. That's why you understand when the word says, uh, if God be for me, who can be against me? That is, I am not here by myself. Uh, I've got some angels with me. That's why the Bible says the angel of the Lord uh, stands God around those who fear the Lord uh, to deliver them out of trouble. I didn't come by myself. I've got some angels with me for the angels of God are charge of me hallelujah just as how people come with devils but guess what I come with angels <laughs> hallelujah so you see there's an understanding that you need to get Mama Masha because of these angels you win <laughs> Woo. I said, because of these angels, you win. <laughs> now, you need to learn how to activate angels. Now, witchcraft is the activation of demons. Prayer craft is the activation of angels. <laughs> Holy Ghost craft. <laughs> oh, somebody is about to get into what? Prayer craft. Call on me. Hallelujah. And I will answer thee. And I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Somebody's about to step into what? Prayer craft. Holy Ghost craft. Hey, mama, she Hallelujah. Now let's get into this message. Hallelujah. He says, This charge I give you, my son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you. 
You see, you've got to understand the word prophecies means the prophetic words. That's words that were spoken to you by the Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit, he always begins with the end in mind. The Bible says, I am the Lord. I declare the end from the beginning. So a prophetic word, this particular prophetic word is God coming and revealing your end before you begin. Are you here with me? So he says, you already have had a word from God. Remember when I preached on the Daba word, the Bible says that Joseph, hallelujah, he was tried until the word of the Lord came. Until the word that God had spoken into his life came to pass. Because Joseph had had a dream. That word had come in the form of a dream that painted a picture of his future. That he would be the leader of his clan that he would be a great leader he would be a political leader that he would be a leader of high rank that that was his destiny that was his prophecy so every person so the first thing you got to understand is that the first law of spiritual warfare is that you've got to know your prophecy you see because if you don't know your prophecy you see there is a prophecy over your life there is a promise over your life there is a picture of your future. There is a destiny for you. But the picture of that destiny is your prophecy. He says if you go to war, you go to fight according to your prophecy. Because your prophecy reveals uh, what Satan wants to stop. If you don't know what Satan wants to stop, uh, how do you know how to fight? Uh, but I've come to help somebody. Hallelujah. To access their prophecy so they can discern, they can see into what God wants for the lives Bible says and it shall come to pass that the spirit of God ha, shall be poured upon all flesh and your young men shall do what see visions and your old men dream dreams that's men and women it says and your servants and handmaidens shall pour out those days of your spirit of my spirit that dreams and visions are the language of the Holy Spirit Hallelujah. That means the Holy Spirit shows people. He shows people what the future should be. Nelson Mandela, at the age of 14, went into a church. It was a Baptist church. And as he sat in the back, he had a vision. And saw that one day, he would be prime minister and president of South Africa. At the age of 14, a picture of his future. Now, that prophecy is what kept him in Robin Island. Oh my God. I said that prophecy is what kept him in Robin Island. That prophecy is what kept him when they would take him and they would dig. They would tell him go start digging. And he would dig his own grave. And he would dig it six feet. And they would say stand in the grave. And then they would cover the grave. And then they would urinate on him. That is what caused his spirit not to be broken. Because of what? His prophecy. I said what? His prophecy. Because he saw. Now every one of you. There is a prophetic word. For your life. This is not necessarily. A, the type of prophetic word I'm talking about. Which I call you and I prophesy to you. That could be it. But it could come through any source. Hallelujah. I received my prophetic word when I was 16 years old. 16 years old, received Jesus Christ, and the Lord took me in some visions and showed me the future that he had for me. God always gives you pictures of your future. God always gives you pictures of your future. God always shows you pictures of your future. What you can be, what you should be, and what you must be. That word is your what? Prophecy. It will be, it could be a total contradiction from where you are right now. It could be a total contradiction from where you are right now. But it's what God has for you. It's the picture of the fruit in the seed. Oh boy, you're not preaching on that. I said it's a picture of what? The fruit in the seed. If you look at a tomato seed, uh, you, will, you cannot look at the seed and see the tomato fruit. 
but somebody can show you a picture and you can say what you mean that seed can produce this fruit yes so when god shows you your prophecy it's the fruit that's on the inside of you i said it's the what is the fruit that's on the inside of you it's the fruit so now he says he says i want you to do something he says i want you to wage a good warfare oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. according to the prophecies made concerning you jesus he says that by them thou mightest wage a good warfare having faith and a good conscience from which some having rejected concerning the faith have suffered shipwrecked so when you do not wage a good warfare you have a shipwreck now why is being defeated in spiritual warfare called a shipwreck you know why it's called a shipwreck because a ship has a beginning point <laughs> a ship has a beginning point and a ship has what a end point and a ship begins a journey and a ship is a transporter a ship transports people no ship is just going by itself you meet a ship says ship where are you going i'm just checking i'm just rolling i'm just chilling what are you carrying nothing i'm just carrying myself there's no ship that's carrying themselves so a ship is carrying something that is precious a ship is carrying a commodity so the reason why you are reckoned to a ship is because you have a beginning point and you have a destination point you are going somewhere and you carry precious cargo that you have got to deliver and the purpose of darkness is to cause you in the middle of your journey to have a shipwreck and have your wreck under the water and so all your treasure is at the bottom of the sea if you look at the bottom of the sea of life our dreams that were never fulfilled at the bottom of the sea of life are businesses that were never built books that were never written messages that were never preached houses that were never built great things that never happened because it's sunken treasure but I came to prophesy to somebody I came with the Yatsa anointing hallelujah to help somebody break free out of a shipwreck your, your boat may have hit the rocks but I've come with an anointing to repair it to get back on course in the name of Jesus you see just as a ship can do what get off course Oh my God. You see, oh, what a, you see, you are a sheep. There's a destination you must go. And you can do what? Get what? Of course. You can actually hit what? The rocks. Jesus. You can face storms that can sink you. Shaka tabasai. So spiritual warfare is really like a ship going through storms to get to its destination point ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. without losing its cargo jesus somebody say i will not lose my cargo jesus so satan is after your cargo if he cannot get you of course he would wreck you and Paul speaks about two men who encountered what? Shipwreck or destiny wreck. That you could go and see the ship at the bottom of the ocean. Let me tell you, there are people who, there's a whole industry of people who all they do is dive under the water to find sunken treasure. That is boats that never made it. That is what? Boats that never made it. They left the port, but never got to where they were going. They left the port. Now, the place that you're supposed to go is determined by your prophecy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, can I speak to somebody? The place that you're supposed to go is determined by your prophecy. Jesus. Lama mo ne shekara basika. 
Oh, oh, glory be to God. There are different things that can cause you a shipwreck, God. Oh, you see in the word that the Bible tells us there was a man by the name of Jonah. He got into a ship because Jonah was in the ship. The Bible says the presence of Jonah of the ship created a storm. And it created a storm. And when it created the storm, the Bible says that Jonah told them, if you want to survive, you're going to have to throw me overboard. So so let me tell you, your ship not only includes uh, the cargo that you have, but it also includes the relationships on your journey. Hallelujah. And if you have the wrong people uh, on the ship of your life, uh, the wrong people will sink you. You see, the people don't understand uh, that people can create storms. Uh, this was a storm that's called Hurricane Jonah. Hallelujah. You could have Hurricane Steve, Hurricane Leslie, Hurricane Jennifer, because because they are in your ship they are a storm by themselves they will create a demonic storm in your life if you want to not become a shipwreck you've got to do one thing throw them overboard they like Jonah they said Jonah surely let's keep you Jonah said, I'm telling you, throw me overboard. They said, listen, we'll throw the goods overboard, but not you. So they threw the goods overboard. They lost their goods. Jonah said, throw me. They said, we like you. When they realized that the ship was about to sink, they said, well, we just have to throw you now. Jonah said, I told you, I am bad news for you. Jesus, he can't help us. I am what? Bad news for you. So there are people who will create warfare in your life by their presence in your ship. What is your ship? Your ship is your life. It includes your gifts. It includes your callings. It includes your relationships. That's the ship of your life. And it leaves a port about to get to a destination. That's why it's called destiny. Destiny comes from the word destination. When, where a person is ended up is called what? Destiny. Where a ship ends up is called what? Destination. Jesus. Oh, am I helping somebody here? Now let's turn to the next slide. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Now you have on the inside of you, you have a treasure. The Bible tells us in the book of 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 7, it says, But we have the treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. So every person under the sound of my voice, every human being came to the earth with a treasure on the inside of them. So there's a treasure on the inside of you that you must carry somewhere there's a treasure that you must take somewhere there's a treasure that you must deliver right now I am delivering my treasure to you part of my treasure hallelujah which is to preach and prophesy for the yatsa of people is part of what's on the inside of me but let me tell you even to get here I had to avoid some shipwrecks even to get here hallelujah I had to get I went off course and then got back on course so so the first thing you got to understand uh, is that in the rain in fighting a good warfare the first thing Satan wants to do hallelujah is stop you getting off the port in the first place some people never make it out some people never make it out he wants to kill you before you make it out so the first thing you got to understand is that Satan comes to kill people physically so there's physical. Because if it kills you physically, the ship doesn't even leave the port. <laughs> the ship doesn't what? Leave the port. That's number one. Number two, if the ship leaves the port, the next thing is to cause the captain of the ship, which is you, to not know where they're going. Here. So the captain of the ship does it know where they're going? All they are is on the sea. They don't know where they're going. They don't know their destination point. 
They don't know where they're going because they don't know that God Almighty has already mapped a course for them. That through the through the tumultuous seas of life, God has plotted a course for them to avoid the hurricanes that are out on the sea. Oh, I love this example because the sea is a frightful place. Because in the sea, you know all those hurricanes came from where? The sea. They all came from where? Coming out of the Atlantic Ocean in Africa. Rise, you know. They all came out from the sea. Fancy being a boat and Hurricane Irma is, is bearing down on you. What happens? Sir? What happens is that people who actually drive boats, they speak to where? They speak to the station, the Coast Guard. And the Coast Guard gives them what? A weather report. And from that they used to do what? Plot their course. So the second thing, that if you don't die in your mother's womb, if you don't die as a child, if you're not killed as a child, the next thing he seeks to do, so number one, he wants to kill you. That is why there's so much abortion. Abortion, miscarriage, is to kill before you begin. <laughs> oh, oh, you didn't hear me. I said you didn't hear me. It's to kill before what? You begin. Mambo Bodeshe. If that doesn't occur, then you start. When you start, the next tactic is to get you what? Of course. Let the wind, let the course take you where? Of course. So you have no idea of where you're going. Jesus. Thirdly, shut up, Baba, sir. if you start is to bring winds and storms against you. The Bible says Jesus got in a boat and he told the disciples, let's go to the other side. And the Bible says there arose a wind that was contrary. Jesus speaks to Peter. He says, Peter, Peter, Satan has desired to sift you like wind, to sift you like wheat. So, the third thing is what we call an evil wind. The first is what? Death. Death before you start life. The second is what? Take you what? Of course. So, from the big, moment you start life, you go, of course. And if you go, of course, Jesus, <laughs> you're supposed to be going towards South America, you're going towards Asia. So there are many people. It's why the Bible says Jesus came to seek and save those that were lost. Lost means you're of course. It says all we like sheep are like what? Gone what? Astray. So the most common thing about human beings is that most human beings are lost and astray. From the path they were born to go on. Because Satan has come because they are cost deviation demons. So they are demons that are assigned to take you off course. Because today we are going to deal with certain demons. They are demons that are assigned to kill you physically. Then they are cost deviation demons. They are demons that are just assigned to take people off course. Jesus. Then they are demons they are assigned to bring an evil wind to sink the sheep. <laughs> Says there arose a storm, and Peter went. He said, "Jesus, care us not now that we perish." Jesus, and Jesus rose up, and he spoke to the storm and said, "What? Peace be still." So that one is bringing trouble to your life. Bringing stuff to your life to sink you. Jesus. Today, we're going to deal with these devils. Hallelujah. I said, we're going to do what? We're going to deal with these devils. Now, one thing it says. Hallelujah. So, we'll do those three devils today. Hallelujah. Now, one thing that it says. It says, if you are going to. If you are going to. Wage a good warfare. 
you have got to have two things. The two things are what? Faith and what? A good conscience. So to wage a good warfare, you need one. Number one, the law of, prof- the law of your prophetic promise. Which means you must know the promise over your birth. Every person, the day you were born, there's a promise for you. Someone say, my prophetic promise. That is the promise God has for me on the earth. A promise of goodness. A promise of greatness. He says, he says the thoughts that I think towards you are what? Of good. To give you what? A hope and a future. So God has a prophetic promise over your life. Someone say, the prophetic promise. The next thing you're going to understand is the law of faith. Let's turn to the next slide. Hallelujah. Shit. Now the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 it says now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. Now I like what it says in the Young's translation. It says now faith is of things hoped for a confidence of matters not seen a conviction. Now faith faith is seen in the realm of the spirit. And being convicted of what you see. Now the Bible says we walk by what? Faith and not by sight. That's because faith is a form of sight. Faith is supernatural eyesight. Faith is spiritual sight. There's nothing called blind faith. There's nothing called what? Blind faith. Come with you. In the realm of the spirit, have seen that we're going to get a new building. That's not so. So we actually have seen it. How many have seen in the realm of the spirit that this church is going to get bigger? That was what seen it in the spirit. So it's not blind. We have what we've seen it. Hi, yeah, yeah. How many of you have seen yourself that you're going to get more prosperous? Hey, have you seen it? Have you seen it in the spirit? You see, now, faith is seen in the spirit. Oh, my God. Now, when you see something in the spirit, you behave it. You always behave what you see. <laughs> That's what the Bible says. Show me, show me your faith by your works. You show me you believe by how you behave. Because nobody doubts what they see. Shika Thomas. Nobody does what? Doubts what they see. Because they have seen it. So faith. Now, if you don't see it in the spirit, that is when you have what? Unbelief. Because you haven't seen it. So some of you, 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 you have not seen in the spirit. You coming out of that trouble. Jesus. Until you see it in the spirit, it cannot be released to you. Because faith is seeing it in the spirit. And then ha- having confidence, it will happen. So when you see it in the spirit, you embrace it. And when you embrace it, you behave it. Jesus. Oh, Lord. Oh, glory. So faith is what? You see it in the spirit, you embrace it, and then you behave it. And you start behaving about the thing that you have seen in the spirit, but nobody sees it in the natural, but you behave in it. And because you behave in it, it will manifest. So faith is behavior born out of spiritual sight. He can't talk to that. Now, I know what's about to hit this service in the next 10 minutes. Because I saw it. So, I, I've seen it in the spirit. I've seen <laughs> that cause, cause deviation demons are going to leave. Because these are demons of influence. That they start from your childhood. 
and they start to work to take you off course we are going to destroy them today Hey, kid. There are demons who, if you are on course, they say, if this one is on course, let's sink them on course. Shh. We are going to deal with those demons today. So, I have already seen in the spirit what's about to happen. And I'm behaving it. Shh. Whew. Some say, open my eyes to see in the spirit. Everybody must see in the spirit pertaining to their lives. Because God is a spirit. Now somebody say, this seeing the spirit thing is spooky. No, it's not spooky. Have you ever, let me tell you what, what is seeing the spirit. Have you ever, before you are now sanctified. So this is in your former unsanctified state. Have you ever met somebody and you met them and you saw something was going to happen? But you just met them. It's like you picked it up, you even had a flash. You understand that? You had a what? You met somebody and when you met them, you just said hi. They just said hi. They didn't even talk to you much but you pick up something in it's called chemistry romantic chemistry and you picked up something and they themselves picked it up but it was what spiritual did you guys talk and say we, we we're going to have a hookup we're going to like each other how did you pick that up spirit you saw it what spiritually are you with me you saw it what spiritually you even came home and said i met this guy i know he's going to call me did he say he's going to call you no did he speak to you no but it's something that i feel how did you see how did you know you saw it what spiritually that is, your spirit went to the future and came back to the present. And you saw in the future, he called you. I, and you saw in the future, you and him. We won't talk about that vision. Are you with me? But your, your spirit, what? Saw that. You saw and came back. Now, that is in a place in the world of romance. That is how faith works. Faith, you actually see the thing. <laughs> you see I'm going to get healed. You see I'm going to prosper. You see God's going to do this for me. You see this thing is going to happen. And when you see it, you start behaving. In fact, some of you, when he called, you laugh. <laughs> I knew this call was coming. <laughs> <laughs> I was just expecting when I was me. I knew where this was going. I said, I knew you go on your first date, you say, I know where this date is going to end up. By third date, I can tell you, I can predict it. Are you with me? So you 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 you, you can how can you predict where the date is going to end up? How can you predict it? How? Because in the realm of the spirit, you do what? You see it. And you saw a sequence of events. Are you with me? How many of you also have seen? I can see. Me and this person, we are going to have an argument. I have an argument now? No. But you, you, you can actually feel the argument in the spirit. It says, we are going to have a blow up. I can feel it. And in fact, it's coming. The blow up hmm, is about one week away. Now it's four days. Now counting two days. I, I, I can feel. 
I feel it. I feel the blow up coming. I even feel I can take. I can. I feel the atmosphere of the blow up. Are you with me? Because your spirit does what? It went to the future, and you can see huh, the track that we're on. Huh, I see what's happened because your spirit. It's a spirit. It has an ability to go to the future and come to the present. Now, faith is the same way. Faith is going to the future and seeing what God wants to do for you. (laughs) Oh, can I help somebody? You mean you can only see arguments? Or you can only see romance? (laughs) Are those the only two things you can see? Or can you see what God's about to do for you? Are you going to see what God is about to what do for you? Is somebody going to develop their spirit to see what God is about to do for their life? Is somebody going to develop themselves to see that? And see where this is going? So, faith. Now, how many of you know that when you see the argument is coming, you, you actually talk about it. You say, you know something? I see, you see me and her? We are about to fall out. You don't tell people. Now, are you practicing the laws of confession? No. It is this. You automatically say what you see. See, yeah, yeah. You say, wow. I feel something with me and him. There's something's going to happen. Your friend says, are you sure? You say, I'm telling you. Has he called you? No. When did you meet him? When I started the office, I got a new job, and I started the office today. Is he in your department? No. He's in another department. How can you know for sure? He says, trust me, I know. Did he say any words to you? He just said, hi. But I know. One week later, you say, uh, Daniel, I told you. <laughs> I could see it what? Coming. I could see it what? Coming. Where faith is what you see coming from God. Ooh. Remember that song? About faith? That, that we used to sing in what in? Hallelujah. The song that says, I can see it coming. My miracle is coming. I can see it's what? Coming. I see this thing coming. It is coming towards me. And I'm moving towards it. (laughs) You understand that? I could see it. Now, the Bible tells us that some people, when it comes to faith, They don't embrace it. Because if you don't embrace faith, seeing spiritually and embracing it, the warfare will destroy you. Jesus. I said, what? The warfare will do what? Destroy you. Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. God's about to do something in someone's life today. I said, God's about to do something in someone's life today. Somebody is about to avoid a shipwreck. I said, somebody is about to avoid a life wreck. Somebody is about to avoid a life wreck. The fourth type of demon is a demon that places a wrong person in your ship. It's a demon that gives you a Jonah. The thing about a Jonah is you always like Jonah. Jonah is not somebody that you can get rid of easily. Some people are easy to get rid of, but not Jonah. Jonah even tells you, I think we need to end this relationship. And you say, no. Jonah, Jonah. Jonah will take your credit card empty your bank account and he said listen I'm fed up with you and Jonah says I understand I have this problem it's best we separate I'm not good for you you say no I'll pray God will fix you 
Jonah says, Jonah says, listen, you are a good girl. You're a good girl. I am not the kind of man for you. You say, but I like you. Stay. Jonah says, right now, I am not, I'm not ready to commit. I still have a problem in committing to one woman. Jonah says, it's a, Jonah says, I still have that problem. You say, it doesn't matter. I will pray. I will go to the bishop. He will cast the demon out. Bondage to greatness. <laughs> Jonah says, but, but I don't know if I want the demon to leave. Never mind. My bishop will cast it out. Jonah is saying, let me go. You are saying, that is because Satan never sends you a Jonah that is easy to get rid of. Because he always sends you a Jonah that your soul likes. Jonah is likable, adorable, but destructive for you. Jesus. So there are demons that specialize in Jonah. Hey. So I'm going to say, after today, I'm going to get rid of my Jonah. You see, because the judgment that hits Jonah will be on your ship. You and Jonah are going down. Jonah will sink you. I know what I'm talking about. Listen, I know what I'm talking about. I've had a journal attack in my life. I know what I'm talking about. I know about Jonah. Jesus. Oh, bless the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Fasting cannot change Jonah. Somebody say, we need some deliverance now. Now, there are these demons that I speak to you about, there are three kinds of demons, three categories of demons that I want to talk about. There are demons that possess people, there are demons that oppress people, then there are demons that influence people. These categories of demons are usually demons of influence. That means they influence you from outside. That's demons that change your course. Course deviation demons evil storms and crisis demons and the last set is Jonah providing demons Jonah could be a friend Jonah could be a romantic relationship I mean Jonah could be a spouse I mean, Jonah could be a business partner. I mean, Jonah could be a business. If you stay there, it will sink you. Totally gone. But you like Jonah. Let's stand up. Jesus. Are you ready to pray? Whew. The first set of demons we got to deal with are what? Course deviation demons. The first set of demons to attack me when I was born were course deviation demons. Because I came out of the womb, I survived that, and the first thing that happened, I developed a stutter and a stammer. We took me off course because I'm born to communicate. So because of that, I do not see myself doing anything in communication. Course deviation demons. Are you ready to pray today? Have you noticed it's called a warfare? Now, when we pray... Angels are going to be released 
to cause people to get back on course. Jesus. Now, how many of you know there are more cost correction angels than cost deviation demons? Because one third of the angels rebelled. So two thirds remain. So there are more angels than demons. But angels are activated by our voice, by our prayer. So angels have to be released to get people back on track. Someone say back on track. Jesus. Back on track. Back on track. Next one. Storm some crisis. And Jonah. We are going to fight. Somebody say fight. We're going to fight. We're going to pray with fire now. Shavadasiya. The release of angels requires, how are angels released? Angels are released. In Psalm 103, it says, Bless the Lord, all you angels that excel in strength, who hacking to the voice of his word. Angels hacking to the word of God in a human mouth. So to release angels, God's word has got, you have to give voice to the word. And when you give voice to the word, the heavenly father, it releases, activates angels. So the word of God in your mouth, spoken with power and fire, releases angels. And let me tell you, I'm seeing my spirit. Next 14 days, some very dramatic things are going to happen. Because people who have been going off track, angels are going to bring you back, back on track. And the demons that have been keeping you off track, keeping you in places that you don't belong, keeping you in bondages that you don't belong, keeping you in states that you don't belong, those demons are going to live today. And you're going to have freedom in your life. Shakatabas. Lift your hands up. Oh boy. Pray this prayer. Say, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I have received your word. I have received your word. I believe. I believe. What your prophet has shared. What your prophet has shared. That there shall be a release. That there shall be a release. Of course correction anointing. Of course correction anointing. Course correction angels. Course correcting angels. Shall be released in this place. Shall be released in this place. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There shall be a release. Let there be a release. Of angels. Of angels. That calm the storm. That calm the storm. Just like Jesus said peace be still. Just like Jesus said peace be still. The angel that held back the wind. The angels that held back the wind. Will hold back the winds of trouble in my life. Will hold back the wind of trouble in my life. The winds of crisis in my life. The winds of crisis in my life. The winds of adversity in my life. The winds of adversity in my life. And in the name of Jesus. And in the name of Jesus. Your angels. Your angels. Will strengthen me. Will strengthen me. To throw any Jonah in my life off board. To throw every Jonah of my life off board. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of in Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Right now. Right now. I declare this. I declare this. Start praying. Shout Let the angels be released now, oh God, in the name of Jesus, to correct every course, Lord. Every course correcting, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Let the angels correct them now, Lord. Correct them now, Lord. Correct them in our family lives, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Correct them in our marriage life, Lord. In the name of Jesus.
Jesus. Correct them in our children's life. Correct them now, Lord, in our destinies. Abashakatayabasoto. Inkatayabasata. Ikashata. Ikatayabasata. Ikashakatayabasata. Ikasa. Correct now, Lord. Correct now. Correct now. Correct now. In the name of Jesus. Ashakayabasoto. Ikasi. Correct now. In the name of Jesus. Every relational correction. Correct now. In the name of Jesus. Atayatabasata. Ikashatayabasata. Open your mouth and pray, people. In the name of Jesus. Pray by fire. Ebabasata. Pray by force. Ekashatayabasata. Tinkato Bababoso Koshakate. Ekantayabasata. Ekantayabasata. Eshayoto Yabasat. In the name of Jesus. Correction now, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Now say this. Say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Course deviation. Course deviation. Demons. Demons. I command you. I command you. To leave my life now. To leave my life now. I disconnect myself from you. I disconnect myself from you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I disconnect myself. I disconnect myself. From crisis bringing demons. From crisis bringing demons. From Jonah bringing demons. From Jonah bringing demons. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I disconnect myself. I disconnect myself. I I disconnect myself. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I disconnect myself. I disconnect myself. I disconnect myself. I disconnect myself. Everything that's got me tied to the Monica. Now in the name of Jesus. I disconnect every cord. I disconnect every chain now. In the name of Jesus. Everything has got me chained and bound. I disconnect now, Lord. Every witchcraft power that's got me chained. That's got me bound. In the name of Jesus. I disconnect now. In the name of Jesus. I disconnect now. In the name of Jesus. 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 Yes. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus.